it looks really simple but anyway we have to start talking by what agile is because if we don't have the right understanding it would be impossible to properly combine the agility concept with something else and unfortunately i believe that most people and most companies do not have the right understanding of agility and that's the reason many of them do not succeed they do not uh, get they don't get all the benefits that are possible so there are two types of people when it comes to defining agility agility is a set of behaviors and practices commonly referred to as agile and when you use them you are agile agility is the use of a certain approach in developing your product which is called adaptive when you're adaptive you're agile and in order to support your adaptation you need to use certain behaviors and practices but they are not agility Ah, you can never be agile without using the agile behaviors and practices. Agility is about a mindset. It's about culture. Everything is about mindset and culture. You can never be anything without having the proper mindset and culture. But that doesn't make that the definition of that something. You cannot wear a white coat and believe that you have become a doctor. Soon you will find out which group I belong to. Well, maybe you have guessed. So, uh, let's start with this, which you probably know. It comes with uh, Prince2 and all other uh, Axelus best practices, such as MSP and MOP. This is basically the way we understand uh, the relationship between project management and program management and portfolio management which is very important because usually we need to have all of them maybe you don't want to have program management but at least portfolio management is necessary and well uh, actually many companies ask us to help them with their project management system I'm telling you this because it's really common they keep saying that our project management is not working properly, we, we cannot manage our resources, we cannot deliver on time and on budget, and you know the whole story. We go there, we start saying everything, checking everything, and for example, we see that they are a company with internal projects, they have, they have their own marketing and sales, a line of products and an IT department which is responsible for maintaining and improving that line of product. Their IT department has for example 70 people that handle everything for the projects and those 70 people are responsible for, for example, 55 projects in the same time I've seen companies like that and maybe your own company is also something like that it's impossible to have a good project management system when you have 55 projects in the same time it's not your project management system that is creating problems for you that's your portfolio management system. That's the place that allows you to have 55 projects in the same time. And well, of course, if you go there and ask people, no one knows that you have 55 projects. No one has a complete understanding. No one knows anything about the projects. They are only focused on specialist activities. And definitely you cannot realize the goals in your whole company. You need to have a proper portfolio management system where all the stakeholders, key stakeholders from the business, from the customer side, get together, create a list of all the projects they need to have, prioritize them, and then let the IT development, let the IT department focus on four, five, or six projects at a time. Get them done and then move to the next one. When we do that, and it's possible, I promise, it's possible. We have done this multiple times before. As soon as you do that, you, your problems, the problems you thought 
belong to the project management system, most of them will be gone and you will be much happier. You will be generating more benefits in your company and you would be able to finish more projects. You will be able to complete more projects. The, the fact that people are in a queue for having their projects to start doesn't mean that they will get their projects later. They usually get their projects completed earlier. So let's get back to this. It, our course is about uh, Prince to Agile. But well, it is still important. Doesn't matter what kind of system you use for your projects. Uh, the idea here is that we work inside our projects. That work creates products or outputs, and the outputs result in outcomes. For example, we develop a piece of software, a document management system. That is the output, the document management system. Or maybe you just want to implement a document management system, in which case the implementation of that uh, existing software will be your product. And what's the outcome? For example, easier and faster access to the documents, fewer errors when you want to find the latest version of something, and so on. They are the outcomes and this is the output. Or for example, you want to build a hospital and that would be your product. And improvement in the healthcare system, that would be your outcome. When we are working inside the project, we go from the left to the right, obviously. But, this but is really important. But, when you want to initiate something, you definitely have to come from the right side to the left. You start by thinking what kinds of outcomes you expect or need or desire to think about them and then you list a number of possible products or projects that can serve that outcome. List all the pros and cons for all projects considering the cost and everything else, risk, cost, return on investment and finally pick one of them which seems to, to be the best. The fact here is that you always, always, always have more than one option. The problem we have in companies is that they don't think about this first step. They just jump to the solution. As soon as they want to think about any kind of outcome, they come up with the answer, some kind of product. And for example, if you're a business analyst or have been a business analyst before, you know how it works. They never talk to you about what they want as the outcome. They always tell you about the product, about the solution they want, which is wrong. A good business analyst always help their customers, their, the business or whatever they are dealing with, focus on the outcomes and then help them generate all the ideas and select the best one. That's a real business analyst. Anyway, as an example, let's say you're, uh, you're part of the government and you see that there are lots of road accidents in your country. You want to reduce the number of road accidents. That's the outcome you desire. We start from there and then you list all the possible ways. For example, uh, creating a campaign, educational campaign to encourage people to drive better. Or right here in Belgium, uh, I realized that there's a, there's a small startup supported by the government to create an application with all the gamification uh, dynamics to encourage the youth to drive better. That's an answer, that's some kind of product. Or for example, to make some changes in the traffic rules. You list all of them and pick one that you believe is the best, or maybe multiple products. That's program management. If you have one, more than one product serving your outcome. But anyway, it's important to understand this. And the part that is crucial for us is the kind of relationship between the outputs and outcomes. That's where the whole story begins. Sometimes we have strong relationships, which makes 
everything really simple and unfortunately sometimes we have weak relationships. Think about the hospital. The relationship between the hospital and improvements in the healthcare, that's a strong, isn't it? You can be sure that the product creates that outcome. It had been like that for hundreds of years. It is like that right now. It will be right like that when you finish your project and even hundred years later. So that's great. We can pack them in one entity. We can see them as one thing. As soon as you, uh, you come up with the best product, I mean, theoretically, you choose the best product that serves your outcome, you can relax, you can focus on the product and be sure that as soon as you create the product, the outcomes will be generated. Well, it's not 100% comfort, but good enough for us in the projects. However, sometimes you don't have that kind of relationship, the relationship is weak. Even though you have done your best, still you cannot be sure. If you create the product, the market, the end users or the customer will really like it. No one knows. Think about the startups. Most of them fail. Why? Because they have a great idea in their own opinion. I have been there and I know how it works when you fail. You have a great idea, you create the product, you put it there for the market and no one buys it. Why? Because the way market behaves in certain cases regarding certain products is really complex. People are complex. And you cannot rely on some initial ideas or initial communications or studies. What can we do? That's the main question here. Let's talk about the simple way. When we have the simple, the strong relationship, we can see the two of them together. We want to start the project and we can plan our whole way. Everything required for creating that output, for example, that piece of software. And since we are sure the product will generate the outcomes, we don't think about outcomes a lot. We focus on the product and it is possible to plan for the product. The point is that we can plan for the product, but we cannot plan for outcomes, the kind of detail planning that shows us the whole way. Think about Gantt charts. Well, unfortunately, in the Agile community, many of the people, even pioneers, great people that have done a lot for us, they don't consider this part. They, I, I, I hear Sometimes they say that Gantt charts or WBS or some other elements are lies or they are just... That's not the case. They are terrible when you don't use them in their proper place. But sometimes when you have this, they are the best way of handling your project. Anyway, we have the detailed plan. We have considered everything, both the elements of the product we know we want to create and even the supporting things for example our risk management activities or risk responses they are not part of the final product they are just there to ensure that we can deliver the final product as planned based on time cost quality scope and the rest you know it you already know all of that or quality activities we plan all of them and when we start the project, our goal, our value is to follow the plan. That's our best choice. We follow the plan, we try to go exactly as planned, but that never happens. So we keep comparing our actual performance with the planned performance and whenever we have a deviation, we recover from the deviation. Think about the normal things we have in Prince2. In Prince2, we always compare the actual performance with the planned performance and which process is responsible for that? Do you remember? I'm relying on the fact that most of you are Prince2 practitioners certified. So unless you have forgot things, 
uh, you should be able to answer these kind of questions. In the controlling stage process, we compare them. And whenever we have a deviation, what do we do? We compare, again, the deviation with the tolerances. If the deviation is inside the tolerance level, then the lower level manager or responsible person will think about ways of recovering from that. For example, the project manager. And if it is above the tolerance level, the problem, the deviation, the issue will be escalated to the high level manager. For example, the project manager sends it to the project board and that is called escalation, exception. Both of them actually. So the idea is to find deviations and recover from that them and go back on the plan, which is our best way to realize the product and consequently, consequently the outcome. This is not possible when we don't have the strong relationship. Because when we have the strong relationship, we cannot pack our product and outcome together. We only have the outcome there. What can we do? We cannot plan for the outcome. Outcomes are really complex. They are abstract ideas. We cannot have a detailed plan to generate an abstract idea. So what we do is that when we want to start the project, we think short term. Of course, we have some kind of vision statement, but that vision statement is not detailed at and that doesn't give us everything we need. So for the detailed plan, we think short term, we think about the subset of the product and between all the alternatives, we pick the one that we believe is the best in serving the outcome. We select that path, we create a piece of product and then we give that product to our customer or preferably to the end users and receive feedback. You have to use that feedback, you know, that's obvious. If you want to receive feedback and only continue whatever we have been doing, that doesn't work. So we use the feedback and think about the next step. We will see how the previous thoughts about the product and the relationship between the product and the outcome inside the whole environment of the project had been working. And for the next step, again, we will think about different options. We will pick the best option, our educated guess, and we will create the next version of our product. And again, we give it to the market, give it to the end users or customers, and use the information generated by that. Use the feedback generated to find our next best step. We continue it like that. And after a while, we will have a product that completely serves our outcome, our desired outcome. Sometimes completely, sometimes just good enough. We usually prefer good enough. What we have here, this approach of developing the product is called adaptive. It's called adaptive because instead of having a predictive plan, we are using feedback and we are using the, the concept of adapting to the market, the concept of adapting to the end users in order to find our best path. The other one we discussed before, this one, it's called predictive because we are predicting everything in the beginning. We are predicting the complete scope of the product. We are predicting our plan for realizing that product. We are predicting the design and everything else. If you want to have a complete understanding of adaptation, in my opinion, the best uh, resource is the book here the lean startup it doesn't mention it doesn't use the word agile much but everything is it's telling you is about adaptation this kind of adaptation is a, uh, is obviously for startups when you have a portfolio or a program in here in prince to agile and specifically whenever we are talking about agility we are thinking about inside the project this one is broader but the idea is the same